Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. And I call this video the five minute masterpiece. And I just want to clarify on the title. Number one, that does not mean you need to spend five minutes editing a photo and nothing more. You should spend however long either it takes or however long you want to. My point is just that as you get comfortable with the tools and do some thinking and planning about what you want to do with your photo, you can very quickly, as you become more fluent, very quickly get to the result you want to get to. So that can save you time, but I just want to clarify, it's not a race. That's point one. Point two about the title is, this is not a masterpiece. I'm not saying, hey, look at my amazing photo. I'm so good, la di da di da um, It's not a masterpiece. I, I like it. I think it's a nice photo. You may hate it. Totally cool. Um, so that's the other point about this video. But the video is about how do you quickly get in, understand what you need to do, and start taking control of your photo. So let me show you the photo. Here we go. This is a photo that um, is a single exposure from Rome. It was a great sunset, and after just a few minutes' work, I turned it into that. And that was a much more vibrant, colorful, and I think beautiful photo. I'm a little biased because I took it. It's my photo, and I just like color. Um, so let me show you how I did that in just a few short minutes. Now, I did a video recently where I said, uh, I think it was uh, uh, the title was something like, you know, think and then edit or something like that. Think first, then edit. I'll put a link up here. But the point of that video is look at your photo. Uh, now, if you do it in the field, it's even better. That is, if you plan in the field to get it right in camera, it's going to ease uh, your pain, so to speak, in terms of any editing you have to do. But in this video and in that one I was talking about from an editing standpoint, make a plan, right? They say plan your work and then work your plan. So uh, what I would do here first is I would go up here to the histogram and I would turn on the blinkies, if you will, uh, for the highlights. And if you're not aware of that, you can click that triangle there and these red uh, dots or this red area will show you where where your photo is blown out, right? It is blown out there. And you can do con uh, conversely the same thing in the left corner and that will turn on these blue uh, dots or blue sections which you don't see. Actually, there's a tiny one there you can barely see, but that's basically telling you where it's uh, too dark. It's basically black, whereas this is basically pure white and blown out. So that's the first thing I would do is I would go get raw develop and tone and just say, okay, the first thing I have to do is get rid of that because I'm all about uh, light, detail, and color. So I want to balance the light first. So that means I'm going to go to the highlights. And I'm just going to start dragging it to the left and you can see those red areas start to disappear. I'm all the way at negative 100 on highlights and it didn't do um, all of it. Now, if I turn this off, the amount of that in the sky is pretty minimal. And to be honest, I don't know that you would even look at it and say, oh God, that's blown out. I, I pretty much doubt that you would do that unless you're just a total like pixel peeper type that's just diving into those things, uh, those details. But just in case, um, you can come then add the tone filter and take highlights down even further. And you know, I'll just go to a negative 100 again. And guess what? I got a tiny bit there. You can, I mean, if you're gonna be uh, picky about that, then so be it. I'm not. I'm gonna turn that off. I now have uh, controlled the light, but the photo is too dark, right? If you look at the before and the after, um, especially the sky, it's gotten a lot darker. So that's why the other reason I have tone, which is I want to take smart tone to the right and kind of brighten that image a little bit and maybe take the highlights up just a tiny bit, uh, maybe a tiny bit of whites. I'm just trying to balance out the light and I think I have a more balanced photo now. I'm going to add a tiny bit of contrast and then maybe a tiny bit more smart tone. And so let me show you what I've done. I've gone from there, a little too dark in the foreground, too dark in that center and too bright in the sky to now having a much more balanced photo. And in fact, I might even lift the exposure a tiny amount, um, something like that, just to get a, a little bit more balanced exposure. While I'm at it and have develop filter, I'm gonna take the temperature to the left a little bit, not that much, uh, and the tint to the right a little bit, and maybe add a tiny bit more contrast here in the develop filter. So let me show you before and after I'm liking the look of this and here's where the color fun comes in and to make it simple I'm going to use a preset which is sorry a look a look it's a look people it's not a preset I gotta learn that uh, I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna click on that to go get looks I'm in my dramatic mood category and I'm gonna add this Hitchcock and I'm gonna close it uh, and now that I've done that 
it's too blue. So I'm gonna go back to this base layer and I'm gonna take this actually the other way and go a little bit warmer to see how that looks. Let me go back up here to this layer and that looks a lot better in fact. So that was something to be aware of. You can go back and change the temperature on the base layer and that's gonna impact how it's gonna look on this layer. So that's the other thing about doing these kind of quick edits or five minute masterpieces uh, and that is uh, I use presets slash looks quite a bit. I've created a number of my own. This pack, Dramatic Moods, is available in the Luminar Marketplace. If you just go to Luminar.com and find their marketplace, it sells there. Um, but I like the look of a number of presets that I built. That's why I built them. Um, and I'm not saying you got to buy mine. You're certainly welcome to. And if you do, thank you. Many of you have, and I appreciate that very much. But you know, if, if even if you don't buy mine, buy somebody else's or build your own. Uh, that's a great way to learn the filters is build your own uh, looks or presets and start to use them on your photos. So I've now got this photo and honestly, I'm liking it. I think it looks great. I would go add tone one more time and I think I'm gonna add structure as well. I'm sure you can imagine what I'm gonna do there. Tone, I'm gonna go a little bit more to the right with contrast. I want a little bit more pop there. Um, but I want to maybe add a little bit of smart tone. Um, and then with structure, I'm gonna go do negative structure. That's the smoothing that I like to do in clouds and water. And then I'm gonna paint that in. Actually, that's not true. I'm gonna erase it because it's a smaller bit of the photo that I can erase it from. And so I'm just coming over here. I don't know if I'm getting a hold of my mouse. Yeah, I am. Okay, so I'm getting a hold of my mouse and I'm just kind of painting this um, unpainting, <laughs> erasing this negative structure from the things that I want to be a little crisper, which would be uh, like the top of the Vatican. That dome is massively awesome. And all along there, so let me just look at that. And let's see here. I got a little bit more there and a little bit there. You know, we're just kind of playing here. This is not Jim trying to be specific and exact. Um, I'm trying to do a decent job, but it's kind of hard, honestly, for me to focus on two things at once. One is talking to you about what I'm doing, and the other is what I'm doing. Um, but I think I did an okay job of my masking, and there's my after. And now I kind of want to go back and get the temperature and tint again and play with that a little bit. So I got develop. You can add develop on subsequent layers. I might come in here and add a little bit more tint because it has a little too much green for me. And I don't know if I'll do warmth. No, I think I'll, you know, I think I'll do something like that. A little bit blue, maybe that's a little too, whoa. Uh, maybe that's a little too blue. I think something like that. Regardless, you can play around with colors for a long time, but the point was just that you can very quickly uh, figure out what you need to do to a photo, which was, hey, you gotta fix those blown out parts, Jim. Um, add some contrast and then start making some color adjustments. There are other things you could do to the, I mean, you know, there's so many filters, you could do all kinds of things, but I just wanted to make a quick video, I'm not sure how quick it is, showing you how you can quickly go from kind of a blah photo where you might say, eh, the sky's blown out, the foreground's kind of dark, I don't think I'm gonna use it, to something that's much more balanced. And in fact, I think I'm gonna go get uh, brilliance and warmth, and I think I'm gonna reduce that brilliance and warmth, and reduce that temperature a little bit, and I'm gonna go paint that in, same place I just painted structure. So, uh, oop, that's an erase. I'm, ooh, you know what I'm gonna do? Hang on. Uh, let's see here, I didn't mean to delete that. I'm moving, you know, I get to talking to you guys and then I forget what I'm doing. So let me just go over here and say structure, mask, copy. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say brains and warmth, if I can click it. Ah, I keep clicking it, here we go, mask and paste and let's see did I get that I did let me show you with the brush mask oh I got to invert it I was thinking I was like something's a little crooked here uh, mask invert so now my mask is applied to that section of the photo which is where I wanted it and all I did was I took the warmth no I didn't uh, I hit my I didn't reset my settings See, I told you, I can't do two things at once. I'm trying to talk to you guys and I'm trying to do what I'm doing. Uh, but bottom line is, now I've got it under control. Let me show you the before and after. If you just look at this section, which is the buildings and that wall, they were picking up a little too much of that golden light. 
and I wanted to cool them off and desaturate them a little bit because I didn't want them to be kind of overdone. I felt a little bit like they were overdone. So now I've cooled it off and reduced the vividness, which is kind of like the intensity of the color um, in that area by copying the mask from the structure and inverting it. So once again, there's the before and the after. There's a quick, I don't know how quick it was, video about how to build a, you know, a five minute masterpiece. It's not really five minutes. It's definitely not a masterpiece, but it's just a fun edit. And I hope it gives you some ideas about things you can do on your own photos. And I do appreciate you watching. I love your feedback, comments, questions, uh, that sort of thing down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos coming real soon, my friends. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care and adios.